my uh, project in India, I kind of feel bad that I don't have pictures and uh, like pictures of me working out in the field, uh, talking with people and everything like that because I was pretty much stuck in an office on the fourth and fifth building of a 10-story super specialty hospital. Uh, that's so I basically worked on an administrative evaluation of a huge hospital in Durgapur, India, uh, in West Bengal. And um, before I get started, I wanted to first again thank, uh, thank the Center for South Asian Studies, thank uh, the Mission Hospital. I also particularly wanted to kind of um, thank, thank the donor for establishing this program. I've actually been, I've actually had this program in mind ever since I was a freshman. And um, I applied to the program back when I was a freshman with Rohit. He was so helpful, uh, sitting in the back, um, just planning out the whole thing, uh, talking with my parents because it, I've never been to India before, and just, just helping me with everything. But unfortunately, plans kind of fell through my freshman year. And now that I'm a senior, uh, or, or I was a senior, now I'm a grad student, I kind of I had that experience, and I'm really, really, really glad that after all that, all that time, I was able to come back and go uh, uh, be a part of this trip. Okay, to get started, uh, the Mission Hospital is uh, a 10-story super specialty hospital with neurosurgery, cardiothoracic surgery, I mean, CT, uh, CT, MRI, every type of suite you can think of. It's, a, it's, it's actually quite amazing. I wanted to kind of stress the importance of how, of, of the establishment of this hospital with all, I mean, you can see that it's kind of like standing amongst the city. Uh, a, uh, Kind, kind, like the only really big skyscraper among among its er area. Okay, and to kind of give you guys some perspective, Durgapur is about 160 kilometers outside of uh, outside of Kolkata in West Bengal. So um, the establishment of a hospital like this, a 10-story super specialty hospital, is uh, I mean really quite amazing. It's the only uh, it's the only cardiothoracic suite in West Bengal outside of Kolkata, and I mean. That statistic is, uh, I mean, pretty amazing if you think about it. So people who, people within that state kind of have to emigrate their way to, uh, to Kolkata and kind of, and establishing a hospital in Durgapur just makes that, makes that, uh, alleviate some of the strain on the system in, in the system over there. Now, Durgapur in and of itself is a large, large steel city. Uh, I mean, its history traces back to the colonial periods when when, uh, when, when the British Empire would put large investments in steel. And even nowadays, you'll find uh, really big traditional names like the Durgapur Steel Plant, uh, Phillips Carbon Black, and Durgapur Chemicals all over there. Um, I actually wrote about it in my blog how I thought, I thought it was more of a tourism, more of like a, a tourism industry because they, they were just touting their steel plants everywhere, come see our steel plants. So, uh, I mean, it was, it was uh, really quite impressive. And, uh, I, and in terms of what that translates to in the hospital is that you're seeing a lot of patients uh, who, who work at some of these steel plants. And as a result, um, you're seeing a lot of cases with asthma, pulmonology, uh, patients that need CTR, MR, MIR, MRI scans and, and such. And just other landmarks I kind of wanted to go through was uh, the places I spent my Saturday nights uh, at the city center. Um, also, there's the National Institute of Technology in Durgapur, one of the big universities, where, uh, where some of the staff uh, got its education from. But majority came from other places like uh, Hyderabad. They came from outside of, uh, outside of the actual city. And in regards to my actual project, so I worked on two parts. I was there for about a month. I worked on two, two projects that I really got engaged with and was really, really happy to be a part of. The first was an EMR implementation. Uh, EMRs are electronic medical records, and you may be hearing about them nowadays in America at least, because there's a big push to digitize healthcare information. And India is in a really unique situation that I'll, I'll kind of get to, uh, where, we, where there's a different type of problem uh, with EMRs and a different type of silver lining and solution as well. Uh, the second uh, project that I worked on was an expansion into a neighboring city, uh, Dunbad. Um, the Mission Hospital, as I said before, is an amazing institution, and uh, what I was supposed to do is basically take a look at its business model um, and see if it's applicable to some other city, uh, Dun Dunbad, which is another about two hours away from uh, Durgapur, and see if uh, having a super specialty hospital in that region is feasible. So the first EMR uh, problem that I came across was that, I mean, there's this huge hospital, super specialty hospital with tons of staff. And uh, I mean, with it being new, there's also a lot of untrained educate, uh, there's an untrained workforce, not too many nurses have to, have to get them all from outside the city. So there's not much of, uh, there's not much of a status quo, more so, but that's, that can also be seen as a silver lining because 
uh, the hospital is able to start from scratch. And what that means is that it bought a completely new EMR system from Charisma Software. It's a Hyderabad IT company uh, that basically completely tailored their electronic medical, medical record system to fit, uh, to fit the needs and to address some of the, some of the, uh, some of the issues at, uh, at the Mission Hospital in particular. And um, so my, where I come in, is to identify gaps in operations that aren't being met by that current electronic medical record system. So, uh, like I said, I didn't have too much, uh, I, didn't, I didn't get to uh, interact with too many people, but I was in front of computers and in front of administration for a good chunk of the day. And uh, the, other, the, other, um, the other prompt that I had was to identify other community issues that may arise as a result of, uh, as a result of using an electronic medical re record system. So the first, uh, the first problem that I, uh, that I kind of saw was that uh, the, in, the, in the electronic medical record system, there's kind, of, um, there's kind of a dichotomy between the wards and the lab systems. Um, there's really no, there's really just uh, an uh, the laboratory diagnostic system kind of works as an inventory system, whereas there's not timestamps, there's not too much, uh, there's not too much information being collected other than other than uh, qualitative information, and um, uh, you don't really get a sense of when when lab results are being delivered or anything like that. And um, uh, kind of where I came in was I kind of talked to the, I kind of uh, went across the different wards, the diagnostic labs, talked about what, what variables are able to be, uh, able to be, what variables are needed to kind of uh, facilitate and make easier the, la the whole uh, diagnostic uh, portion of the hospital, and sir, sir, talked to some of the technicians, asked where they, where they saw problems, and kind of relayed that information to the, to the programmers at Karishma, uh, at Karishma Software. Uh, the next uh, big thing is, uh, is, actually, um, is actually a problem that I feel that uh, American EMRs are also, again, are also facing right now, is that interoperability with EMR systems is, uh, is kind of moot. There, there's no interoperability. That's probably one of the biggest problems with this whole push to digitize healthcare in the U.S., in the world, wherever. And um, especially when uh, Durgapur, the Mission Hospital Durgapur is wanting to start to, uh, wants to start interacting with a lot of nursing uh, shelters within the region, it's going to be more and more difficult to actually start to take some of that information on a computer and deliver it to, uh, deliver it to a primary care center or a nursing center or some other place within uh, West Bengal. So uh, again, I kind of talked to, uh, talked to some of the people at Krishma Software. Uh, basically broke down all that, all those x-ray scans, all those MRIs kind of like went, kind of went, looked at where they, where, where, what's the most basic type of file and, um, and found out that everything basically boils down to an HTML text format type of file and recommended, all of these are really recommenda recommendations, some of them were taken, some of them, I'm not sure, hopefully they will be taken, um, but, uh, but basically recommended that they be broken down into their most, uh, e most essential components so that they can be sent and be used at some of the other nursing, uh, other nursing shelters and other hospitals in the region where patient, with, with the same patients go to. Uh, the pharmacy module at, in the electronic medical rec record system is probably uh, Karishma's uh, pride and joy. Uh, Karishma has uh, a great pharmacy module that sometimes just, ex that it just sometimes exports and some, uh, some pharmacies use in South Africa, in uh, Bolivia, all across the world. And um, it, so the, the pharmacy module that it uses could, uh, is, could, could be expanded is what kind of what I saw to be used in wards, to be used in, um, to be used in all the different other departments uh, in the hospital. Uh, I mean, for example, I, I came across the story where um, in the nursing ward, um, some, of the, some, of the nurse, some of the nurses would basically copy down with uh, with hand notes where they were some of the like patient information and after about two weeks of starting a brand new a brand new directory of everything that's happening in the ward that got lost uh, pretty easily it was one patient who basically came in kind who is kind of uh, had some serious critical issues with him and everything kind of got tossed around and uh, the basically the whole inventory system the inventory book got lost and I mean ki and kind of taking that uh, taking the systems in the pharmacy department and uh, moving it to moving it to the wards and moving it on to uh, to the places where patients are seen uh, could be a possible solution to kind of uh, protect against that.
Uh, the, next, the next part of the electronic medical record system that I looked at is uh, process mon monitoring. So at the end, uh, when a patient is taken from, uh, taken, as an taken as an outpatient and entered into an inpatient, everything is taken uh, regarding the patient, all, all his information. He's followed throughout the whole electronic med medical record system into one comprehensive center, except for discharge. And um, discharge is one of those areas that are, that's, kind of uh, that's kind of hazy. There's, um, there, there's a central location in the office uh, that, that kind of deals with that, and there's also, um, within each ward, there's a, there's a discharge office that kind of deals, deals, with, so, deals with that. So what that leads to is uh, double billing, usually. Um, and that adds to the cost, that adds to basically, a pay, somebody has to go back and see, all right, what happened? Why is this patient billed twice as much as, as, he, as he need be? And that basically slows down everything and um, adds time, adds cost. Uh, makes healthcare delivery uh, uh, much more inefficient. And kind of my recommendation was to adapt a kind of leaner approach. Uh, for those unfamiliar, leaner, lean approach systems are kind of, uh, kind of stress the, the, the fact of identifying problems as they happen. So kind of, kind of identifying at every stage of the patient discharge process. Just, uh, just take a look to see if there's a double billing, a uh, uh, any, anything wrong, any, anything that raises, raises major flags, and not wait, and not hold off until the end when, uh, when you see a double, a double uh, booking or a double billing for that patient. And uh, I mean, that, that pretty much uh, wraps it up for my EMR project. There's a, there a, a few, uh, I mean, those are, those are the major things. I mean, there's a lot of numbers involved, but uh, I kind of want to spare you guys all of that. I just want to take a big picture approach. And in terms of uh, taking that and moving it forward, um, uh, in, terms, in terms of myself, I, I've been working on an electronic medical record like uh, a type of startup in Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor has a great startup community. And some of the, some of the lessons that uh, I've learned about, about, double, about double booking, about interoperability, I've been kind of, I've been kind of internalizing it and um, keep, kept in contact with the hospital. And uh, I'm using it as I, as I, uh, as I continue uh, over here in the States with my, with my studies and uh, continue to work uh, with other students on, on this personal startup that I'm, that I'm working on. So the next, the next project, like I talked about, was an expansion into Dunbad. Uh, it's, it's, like I said, about two hours outside, right there, uh, from Durgapur. And uh, the reason why, the reason why, um, that, the reason why the Mission Hospital particularly focused on Dunbad was because it was, uh, it had the most similarities, really, to Durgapur than any, any other possible uh, city that we that that the administration was targeting, and that's mostly because uh, Dunbad is a major mining city. It has, uh, I mean, analogous to the steel industry in Durgapur, uh, the mining industry uh, employs a large part of the population, and hence um, a lot of the insurance, a lot of the reimbursements that uh, that the hospital deal with de deals with, they'll be kind of uh, they'll, they'll have that they'll have that as a as a jumping off point, and won't have to start over from brand new. Uh, when they when they open up another uh, another hospital, and uh, I mean before I move on, I also just want to stress again the importance of I mean another hospital. Uh, the fact that the Mission Hospital opened up uh, less than two three years ago and is um, and is serving uh, I mean countless number of patients and offering services that were never never available before is uh, I mean it's kind of mind boggling that they can be uh, doing this in some small city in West Bengal. So, I mean, expanding this is kind of like, uh, is kind of, it's kind of compulsory to be able to take, a, take such an excellent business model and kind of move it on. And if it, if, it is, if it is so great, kind of have it be used in other places in the region. So, like I said, uh, the Durgapur model is a super specialty hospital. We're gonna try to amplify, uh, uh, we're gonna try to basically replicate this somewhere else. It has over 15 different uh, clinics or departments. Um, and it's expanding with a tele teleconferencing system and needs more. So we're basically going to take try and uh, take the finances of all this and and look and see if it's applicable to Dunbar. Um So the Durgapur model, uh, the, in terms of the finances, it was financed with a fifteen million dollar loan from a bank um, that covered the initial land costs, uh, building costs, and operating expenses. Um, and that fifteen million dollars uh, is based is predicted to uh, be paid back over eight years um, f uh, from, from, 
from revenue from each one of the departments and uh, to cover costs, salaries, things like that. And uh, by the 10th year, we expect uh, the hospital to f have a positive cash flow. So in about uh, 20, 2017, uh, the hospital should be expected to have a positive cash flow. Uh, the methods that I went about to go survey and get an idea of what, what departments are needed is really anecdotal. I drove to Dunbad maybe once or twice uh, to talk to some of the uh, surveyors on the field and get an idea of what types of what types of illnesses, what types of departments, what what type of departments can uh, are needed in that region. And um, there is little systematic research done on it. I tried to uh, go through uh, international health databases and to try and pinpoint a specific city. And India is really difficult. I mean, there's more macro data than there is micro to to get an understanding of the specific needs of one region. So I went, I went to, I had to draw a lot of, um, uh, I, I had to kind of draw a lot of conclusions myself to get an understanding of. All right, there's so there's so many people working in um, a mining city. What type of what type of departments would be uh, needed, and and then uh, come up with the revenues and costs associated with each one of them. So. Uh, again, the reven revenues broke down to departmental projections, insurance, insurance coverage, reimbursements, expenses. You can see them uh, listed there. Um, and uh, this, this again, I said there's a lot of spreadsheets. There's a lot of that type of stuff that I worked on. Uh, here's one spreadsheet. Uh, there's another. And what I mean, basically, what this all says is that the revenues, uh, if you plan it for the prep, if you plan to uh, develop the proper departments will cover the costs. And um, particularly in Dunbad, uh, there, there's a need, it seems, for can, uh, cancer centers and a lot of chemotherapy that uh, possibly could help cover costs for some of the departments are more uh, expense heavy. Um, so with that, uh, I would like to take any questions anyone has.